How's everybody doing? Zero here. Guys, I am going to hit you with some crazy stuff. So first of all, a lot of people have been wondering how good Roy is in Smash Ultimate. And I am very pleased to say, well, in my tier list, which you should check out if you're interested, uh, where I rank each individual character. Uh, here's the more detailed, you know, each character information you want to say. Like these analyses are more so like, I feel like these analysis videos that I'm making are more so about me explaining the reasoning uh, for my tier list. Now, guys, I want to remind you that I put Roy in tier one, which means I consider him basically a top tier. And I think that Roy is actually a character that I might use for tournaments. In fact, I'm so interested in playing with him that I might literally use him in tournaments because of how good I think the character is. So this is uh, this character is quite the big deal. Now, guys, before we get started with, um, with the analysis, which I have a ton to say, I want to remind you guys I am giving away two brand new Nintendo Switch Ultimate Bundles, which come with the console, a controller, and it comes with a game, uh, code to download the game uh, pretty much immediately as it becomes available, guys. Make sure to click the Gleam link in the description below if you want to participate. Make sure to follow me everywhere on social media, subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me uh, on Twitter at Zero Wondering, on Instagram at Zero Wondering, and on Twitch at Zero. Uh, and also, if you subscribe with Twitch Prime, which you can even sign up for free for a free trial and subscribe completely free or use someone's Amazon Prime. Um, you get massive entries to win this. But guys, make sure to win this so you, you can play top tier Roy and Ultimate. <laughs> now with that said, let's get started into the video. Um, guys, so <clears throat> Roy has undergone a ton of changes in Ultimate. I'm not exactly sure why they, in my opinion, I think he's been massively buffed. But I think the main reason I think he's buffed uh, in fact, before we even watch this video, is the, the main reason I think this character has been buffed is because of his frame data. Now, here's Ruven. He's one of the most trustable people that do frame data. Pretty much one of the main people behind the majority of the frame data for Smash 4. The guy's the calculator, pretty much. Um, he says, Royals aerial landing lane. Just look at this. Air, 8, fr eight frames. Back air, 10 frames. Up air, 9 frames. Down air, 14 frames. And neutral air is 9 frames. Um... To me, this is ridiculous because keep this in mind that these are numbers that Roy <laughs> did not even come close to having Smash 4. So Roy in general is much safer in the air, especially as neutral. Now, this means that Roy can approach more. One big weakness that Roy had in Smash 4 was that he was a close quarter swordsman that could not approach. And he can't camp. So he's left in this middle ground that he can't approach and do what he's good at. And he can't camp so that he sucks. Pretty much why he ended up sucking. The reason I found so much, so much potential, so much potential in him in Smash Four, was mainly because he actually had a lot of combos and he had good hitboxes and he had good damage, and he had a decent recovery. But then it, it became clear that his aerials were just not fast enough to allow him to approach, and then he ended up sucking. Now in Smash Ultimate, they buffed him tremendously by making all of his aerials much faster. Just It's just a fact, much faster. Not to mention that he still has some of the most, um, a lot of his bread and um, butter combos he still has. He can still do jab into aerials, down throw into combos, um, up throw is still a kill throw, four smash is ridiculous. It just feels like this is like the most, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I feel like this is the strongest version of Roy I have ever seen in any Smash game. Much stronger than in Melee, much stronger than in Smash 4 Disney. I think this might be the best version of Roy we've, we've seen so far. Now, cool story. There was a tournament. Um, I'm not. Sh I forget if this tournament was in the Netherlands or in Belgium. It was. It was. It was one of these places. There was a tournament uh, for Ultimate, and the guy who won the tournament (spoilers) was a Roy player. So there's been two pre-release tournaments that have been won by Roy: a Japanese tournament and a European tournament. Now, this is actually. Further proof where I believe the Keck is actually nuts. Now, let's just watch this Grand Finals, which is a 12-minute Grand Finals, um, where the Roy player will showcase a ton of stuff. Now, this person who's in Grand Finals, he is actually a very experienced uh, Roy player, I was told. He's one of the, the main Roy people uh, from Smash 4. Now, <clears throat> for example, just notice how quick Roy can just basically just jab a situation. For example, here he jabs, it trades, and then... He grabbed the Pac-Man before he could do anything. So, like, the jab traded with, with something Pac-Man did. And then you can still punish him for that. Because jab combos into stuff. Um, Roy goes for down throw. Immediately combos into neutral. Free combo. 
free damage. Roy retains combo throw. This is important because most characters, like I mentioned in other analysis video, have lost their combo throws and have lost their combo potential. So for Roy to maintain combo throw is a huge deal in a game where most characters actually got theirs removed. This is a big, big, big deal. And if you manage to notice the uh, the angle in which down throw upper goes in, you can follow up off of this. Like, uh, if the Roy was a little bit more quicker, he could have went for an upper here. He went for 40 here. It barely misses. But he went for upper here. It would have landed. And then he would have had a follow up for free there, for example. Just look how quick Roy can throw aerials. He can actually swing. And that's a huge deal. Because Roy needs to get up close. And he needs to be able to have quick frame data. Look how Roy can just swing now. A huge deal, huge, huge deal. Roy can actually approach. Now, <laughs> fun story. Every time the stage tilts with uh with this Pokemon, I always just tilt my head. <clears throat> well, we're not we're not doing that because uh Rock Show is gonna fast work because it makes it too hard to um look at the footage. So we're gonna we, there you go. It makes it too hard to look at the footage. Now look up Roy's force smash. Bah. Roy's, I will remind you, Roy has one of the strongest force smashes in the game. And Roy's force smash is that force smash that is going to kill you at 80%. Or like 70 even. Or even worse if you are um, lighter. So in this game, it's going to matter a lot because people are going to have to fear your force smash. And if you catch someone doing a mistake um, that you can punish with force smash, they're going to feel it. Which means that Roy's punish game is very strong inherently simply because Roy itself is a very strong cat with very strong moves. Um... You might say, okay, zero, but that's obvious. But you have to understand that most characters that I rate as top tiers tend to be short characters with weak moves that can just combo you and just hit you, and it's hard to hit them. Roy is in this situation much different. He's a taller character. He's not small. Uh, he's very strong, and he has combos as well. Now, what is Roy's weakness is that he has no projectiles. So he has to consistently approach, which means his camping game is not the best. But, you know, his offense is, is powerful. Now, Roy's landing options are not the best either. I feel like landing options, he and Santa suffer simply because he doesn't have... He does have moves to land with, but he doesn't have, like, a, like projectiles to throw down. He doesn't have, like, a Diddy Con Monkey Flip. He doesn't have Olimar Wizzle, Pikachu OB, like, these broken tools. But he has arrows he can land with, so... He will struggle at landing a little bit. Now, if you look at Roy closely... You notice that his run speed is actually pretty fast. So it's easier than it's ever been for Roy to get places, especially because they added dash dance into the game. This means that Roy is likely to have a very good, strong ground game simply because he can dash quickly to places and he can dash dance to intimidate opponents and find openings much easier. I really think Roy is neutral. He's literally going to be dash dance left, right, left, right, find openings, go for dash, dash go for grab, go for neutral. I think that neutral play, uh, neutral strategy is very, very solid. Um, now, what does Roy offer that other swordsmen uh, don't have? Well, the first thing that Roy has is that his hitboxes are very, very meaty. Just look at, for example, just the way he can swing at people. Jab, for example, here, force smash. He can swing at you, neutral there. And all his moves flow into each other very seamlessly. Forward combos into forward, neutral combos into neutral, or forward, upper combos into upper. Like, a lot of his moves combo into stuff. And it's very easy because Roy's moves tend to send you close to him. Um, like, Roy's moves tend to have very um, powerful knockback growth. So they send you close to Roy at lower percents where you can combo easier. And then at kill percents, they tend to just kill. So it, it tends to just be broken. That, that That's just a broken move. So, <laughs> so Roy in general can just combo you and then he can kill you in the same vein. Also, if you guys are into final smashes, his final smash is, uh, is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I saw a Japanese Roy combo down throw into Final Smash. I'm not sure if it was a true combo. It looked like a combo, though. And it killed someone at 10%. So, uh, Roy's, first uh, Roy's Final Smash, in case we ever play with Final, uh, final Smashes, which I hope to God we don't. <laughs> um, Roy's has a broken one, so it just it just kills you. It's just, you just die at 20%. Um, even, I've seen people die at 10 to this. So, in case that ever happens, then Roy will, will be good at that main game. <laughs> <laughs> That's some right, 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 right uh, side uh, random analysis. For example, look how he can just combo fair. He, he could have done fair, fair. He got greedy and he went for fair down it. He didn't have to. Also, first hit on neutral air. That's a big move. 
first hit of neutral combos into a whole ton of stuff. Like Roy can do like first hit of neutral into like up smash, first hit of neutral into jab, into a whole plethora of stuff. And just Jesus Christ, look at force smash, dude. He kills what percent did he die? At six, he's at 64%. Oh, there you go, he's dead. Just like that. Like Roy is just way too strong. Uh, now, what can Roy can offer compared to other swordsmen is the fact that a lot of characters tend to just not have the same power that Roy has. Because Roy can kill you with up smash, he can kill you with force smash, he can kill you with both up smash and force smash, but up tilt, but four tilt. Uh, he can kill you with up throw as well. He can kill you with down smash, but back air. You know, he just has way too many moves that a lot of his moves just kill, uh, which makes Roy Roy's way of finding a kill much easier than most swordsmen. For example, Shulk has to rely on going like into smash mode, going for like a like a tilt. He has to rely on smash mode to get kills. Uh, maybe he has to find a, a smash stack, which tend to be slower for Shulk. Um, you know, he has other options to move easier. He has more mobility than, than Roy, but he lacks in kill power. Uh, for example, Barth. While being uh, consistent, uh, while being having, I guess you want to say more range, um, he has to rely on tippers to kill you, which means that if you don't land these tippers, you actually just don't kill, even when your kill moves. Uh, Roy just, just just kills you. <laughs> he just kills you. Uh, so I find Roy to be more consistent and more powerful. And I think that's something that a lot of other swordsmen are lacking. Um, they don't have very consistent kill options. I think the only other character that feels this way is Lucina. And Crumb. Yeah, I will say Crumb too. But, um... We don't talk about Chrome yet. <laughs> That's for another analysis video. <laughs> but yeah, um, so I, I really, really, I like, like Roy has the potential to be the single best swordsman in the whole game, which to me is crazy because I mean, if we <laughs> if we were talking about Smash Four, you would think I'm <laughs> you would think I'm on something. But uh, but this makes, for example, just look at this. Roy comes in, lands with neutral air, first hit on neutral into combo, true combo of Smash. So he has kill setups. He can. Uh, he has true kill setups. In, for example, with uh, with Nair, first setup Nair with jab. He can do like jab forward. That's a kill setup. Um, down throw into stuff as well. And then he has the baits. Like he can just uh, bait you during these true combos and then catch an air rush or something like that. Uh, also, his dancing blade kills uh, decently early as well. Uh, I'm not sure if we see it uh, during the set. I can't remember. But there's many clips where I've seen Roy side B kill like an 80, a 90, a 100. So like that, that's amazing, dude. Because like uh, it, like, like Roy side B definitely felt like it got the short end of the stick in Smash 4. And Lucina and Marx, um, especially Marx uh, side B, really outclassed everyone's. But in this one, it seems like they really gave a little bit more love to side B. Uh, but yeah, um, main things. Oh, look, for example, ooh, that's uh, something I also wanted to talk about. You guys go here, look, you can wave bounce, just like in Smash 4, you can wave bounce uh, jump side B, which gives you an approach jump because you can dash dance, jump in, wave bounce uh, side B, give yourself a little bit more backward space, and then come in with a side B to trap them. Very, very good tool. Also, I'm not sure if this is a buff from Smash 4, but Roy was very prone to getting pineapple because he's up B, it worked in a way like this. It was like an arc, kind of like this. Uh, he was prone to getting under stuff and then dying, getting pineapple. Uh, but in this clip, he goes completely through Bridge of Elden while recovering. Um, actually, um, I believe I have an image blocking you guys. So let me, <laughs> let me remove it real quick. Uh, okay, you guys will be able to see it. All right. So if you look at the bottom right right here, you see my cursor right here. Look at this area right here. Roy will basically uh, go through the level. In fact, he goes completely through the level, as you can see right there. And then he just teleports and grabs the ledge. I don't know if this happened in Smash 4. I don't know because I've never seen it. I really want to say no. Um, but maybe it's just Bridge of Elden being glitchy. But he, it, to me, it looked like either they changed his recovery or, or this stage is glitchy or just something glitchy happened. But maybe it was a buff. So that's just notable to point out. At the, at the very least, it's notable to point that out. At the very, very, very least. Roy's down smash also kills as well. It's very that's a it's a very notable move as well. Like I just I just I, I'm I'm just very fond of the way they made Roy in this game. Really because of the lack of landing lagging aerials, like the much less lag, the media hitboxes, the, the the consistency in his swings. Like I know for a fact if I hit somebody with Roy, I'm I'm hitting them. You know, and I, I like that a lot. I'm very, very fond of that. 
For example, he did jab four till a little bit earlier. There's a little bit of camping in this level. Oh, he could have done, for example, here he could have done double four there. Could have landed four there into another four there into possibly more like four there here. Got a fair again, something, you know, he like the combos can keep going. This, this character's moves flow, uh, flow into it themselves. Also, interesting to note here, this is the sprawl I'm going to do for another video, but um, you can apparently buffer uh, an action during a cut, uh, final, sm a sm final smash meter cutscene or like final smash meter. Because look, Pac Man here begins an air dodge during the cutscene and then dodges the move, so you can buffer something during them. Uh, they're still broken though. <laughs> But just useful to note. I'll probably make another video for them. Okay, Roy gets timed out here. I mean, Rachel Belden, kind of hard to approach. Let's see here. Or for example, he did four and then he tried to like, like uh, combo the... Ooh, I like this a lot. He tried to combo like four into the truck, but look. Uh, what this guy has done is that he's doing fourth throw into run side B, especially because they can get into a tech chase pos uh, position as well. So he's trying different options. I feel like down throw is your main combo throw, but fourth throw you could maybe use, uh, depending on if they fall into the ground or not, you can maybe get like a free side B, which is more damage than neutral. Upper, upper. Neutral, just, just. <laughs> diddle, dude. Diddle, diddle actually killed him. That was kind of nuts. What a, what a timing from the diddle, dude. What, what a timing. Also, Roy's recovery is pretty decent, to be honest. Like, it's not amazing, but it's not bad either. I will say it's, like, above average, which, if anything, is just good. Um, he tried to combo side B after this. Uh, he could have just done Pokeball neutral air into four. That was a free four right there. But he went for side B, which is uh, was a little harder to land. But uh, like like I said, like I said many times during this video, like the amount of combos that flow from this character makes him so much better. Um, also to note here is that Roy lands here with an upper and Pac-Man grabs and then he hits him before <laughs> he gets grabbed. I mean, they traded, but just to know like how much safer that move is compared to a uh, Smash 4. Like if you did it in a Smash 4, you get grabbed even by Pac-Man. Or Smash is really strong here. Although, keep in mind, Hammer Bro actually hits him there. The Hammer Bro actually hit him there. But he died because of the Hammer Bro. But Force Smash, I mean, it's still a ridiculous move to kill you AD anyway. Like, it's so important to have a move that just kills so early. Because you can make one read, uh, one important read, and then you can just win a game um, based off of this read. So, it's honestly a huge, huge, huge deal. Jab would have combo there for jab combos for free even at kill, even at kill, even at uh, higher percents it combos for free like for example peep out the the jab that Roy does right here free fall up right here in fact Roy just he could have landed he just missed uh, one thing to note in this game is that characters move a lot faster than I'm used to so like when I play this game I'm like wow oh, damn my like, characters are just kind of moving around um, and the controls feel a little bit more slippery. Okay, at this point, uh, first of all, I don't know who came up with the idea to give a uh, to give uh, <laughs> to give people an item that heals you by running away because you the item will heal you. All you have to do is just run away. I find that item very interesting because it promotes camping. I don't know, it's interesting. Although, like the heart, like the Zelda heart container is better because it heals you completely, or like heals you way more at least. War Smash also does so much damage as well. He's a fifteen. Ah. He's now he's at 36. It does too much damage. Like Roy in general does damage. Whenever he hits you, you're going to feel it. And it's important because there's a lot of, you know, characters. Sometimes they have a lot of combos. They don't do enough damage or they do damage and they connect, but they don't kill. Roy kind of just does the whole package. He, he does damage, he combos, and he kills. He's not broken any of these in particular, but uh, maybe a killing, but still, you know, just... The whole package for Roy is just very, very attractive, which is what I like. Oh, look at side B. Look at how side B works in this game. Uh, also, Roy, they change his um, voice acting. He speaks in English now, but Roy's voice in English, he, he sounds like a man. Like, for example, just hear this out, record. Hear this dancing blade. 
You hear that, dude? Roy sounds like a man. <laughs> and if you hear the other dancing blade, he sounds pretty interesting too. Damn, dude, you, you hear that, dude? Sounds sounds so angry, and I love that because Roy feels cool to use. Feels cool, which is added bonus points. Now, in terms of damage, this this dancing blade downwards does 14 damage, almost 15 damage. Very, very solid amount of damage. So you can get like three or four of stock. You do a whole ton of damage. So I like that a lot. Um, Roy's Dancing Blade feels useful. Actually, is it Dancing Blade? Is, is it called something else? It might be. I think it's Double Edge, maybe. I don't know. I, I forget. But regardless, um, the move itself feels very meaty. It does damage. It's useful. It's quick. You can do it out of dash, which makes it more versatile. And it kills. So amazing move, really. Frankly, just a ama straight up amazing move. And why is the video stuttering here? Yeah, okay, we skipped it a little bit. The video was stuttering there. I don't know why it just was. Also, to be uh, reminded, it's something that a huge buff that will buff Roy tremendously in this game is the fact that if people air dodge, they lag a, a whole ton of time in the ground, which means that if Roy manages to make people air dodge, he can likely get a force smash out of these situations or a smash attack, which is a huge buff to Roy. Um, also, the fact that people can dodge as easily off the level means that Roy, Roy can likely now edge card as well. But the biggest buff of the mole is the fact that Roy can now run force smash. He can run, press down, and force smash, which means that he can now punish a lot more things that he couldn't in Smash 4, where he will be forced to run up smash. Now he can run and force smash, which means that it opens a whole plethora of new kill options for Roy, which is a big, big buff. He can run fourth till as well, run up till whole ton of kill options that Roy had closed and uh, he, that were not an option in Smash 4 are now options in Ultimate. So huge, huge deal. Huge, huge deal. All right, let's see. They also added a whole new bunch of animations. For example, he's down there, um, has like this fire property. It just looks kind of cool. Like it has like a better property to it. Like you'll 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 see the downer in a moment. Yeah, right there. It just looks cool. Now, in terms of um, let me see. Let me just skip <laughs> because there's like a random parry here. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, regardless of that. Um, oh, look at this. He actually could have combo that final stones. It's like Roy can combo neutral into final smash, but people can buffer the air dodge during the cutscene. So the cutscene makes makes the attack come out later, essentially, because they have to be flashy and cool. <laughs> but Roy Roy can basically neutral it and then pretty much combo or put people into a position to final smash. So just look at look at Roy's combo potential. He can jab here, jab into aerial for free, like I keep been saying. And now he's down there. Not only does it have a it seems easier to land for me. Like, I feel like in Smash 4, I will miss this downer. Like, I feel like it not, will not work. Maybe they fix the hitbox up. I don't know. But it looks easier to land as well. And it also just Omega kills as well. Very strong. Very flashy. Looks cool. Feels cool. At lower percents. Uh, oh, keep in mind that the reason he was able to final smash there, not because Roy Jab doesn't combo, but it's mainly because um, there's a very small window uh, between, between, like, Jab. Where like you can't really air dodge or like do stuff, but like you can uh, mash neutral B with uh, final smashes, and you gain invincibility. So it kind of saves you in a pinch, dude. Oh my god, look at look how meaty these attacks feel. Like look, neutral does, Jesus Christ, neutral does sixteen damage, dude. Look at this, sixteen damage, and it come went to that forder. Jesus Christ, that did so much damage. And also Roy, another buff, he cannot turn around while doing neutral B. So it's much easier. Like it's, people can't just roll behind you against neutral. Air. You can charge neutral at the ledge, and if they roll from you, uh, you can turn around and hit them anyway. So it's a humong It's a it's a huge, a huge, huge above. It makes the move so much more useful uh, in neutral. But yeah. So the, that's the Roy winning the tournament, pretty much. As you can see, guys, Roy has the potential to be the best swordsman in Smash Ultimate. <laughs> and or at least um at least at the very least i think he's top tier i this character just has too much too much mobility too much power 
and he has massive massive aerial landing like buffs from smash 4 he retains the jab combos the throw combos he's up there still kills side b kills he has access to more options to kill that he never had in smash 4 such as run up smash i'm sorry run up tilt, run four tilt, run four smash run down smash um things that he never did in smash 4 now he has access to i think all of these benefits will buff roy tremendously he's really benefiting from the fact that air dodge lags so now he can abuse that off of reads and strings to make um bigger reads like enforcement into force smash or things like that more um more common and he will really really benefit off of the dashing changes like dash dancing and running and pressing down and doing something i think he will really really benefit from this so guys if you're on the fence about playing roy if you like if you think roy is your boy and you wanted to play roy i could not tell you what more happen is that I think Roy is so good that I might literally play him. He's he's in my crosshair of characters that I might legitimately play in tournament. So keep that in mind, guys. With that said, guys, thank you all for watching the video. Make sure to subscribe to stay tuned in my content. I'm going to keep up the ultimate analysis coming up. We're, we're pretty much at, at 320,000 subscribers. The channel has been growing so much. You guys are fantastic supporters. Uh, I love all of you. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to sub. Um, but when you sub, I'm sorry, make sure when you sub, hit the bell. So you can keep up with the content because some of those videos don't get pushed into your sub feed. So hitting that bell will guarantee that you don't miss a zero upload. Um, yeah. With that said, guys, thank you all for watching so much. And I'll catch all of you around another zero video, right? Don't forget to participate in the giveaway. Link in the description below. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching.